Wow, that's, and a, it was that's all, heavy right there. And it was all up in there. Free. You say six shot, soldier, Str- slim, uh, uh, masterpiece, silk. Man, come on, baby. And who was with baby? Skull Duggery. Come on, man. And this, then, uh, this is something serious. <clears throat> that's, a, were, that's a serious lineup, man. They were up in there, all of them up in there, freestyling over about it. Are you serious? This was before baby got his deal. P just got his deal and had... His name was out there because And they were freestyling on by KLC off the parkway is body body. Yeah, miss- we on boss talk one on one. Yeah, we gonna talk. How do you look at the way cash money too? They were the, the same thing. After after no living in cash money, they have never been given a deal. They, they, I'll be damned. Cash money too. New yeah. Orleans. Let me ask so you <clears throat> see you I heard I heard that you when Master P met baby, you was in the midst of that whole thing. <clears throat> Oh, it happened at your spot? No, or? it happened, the spot that you're talking about. Yeah, where well, you walk through that, through that little trail. Like, yeah, that, it happened in that basement. Wow. How was that? It was, it was. Well, they, uh, they wasn't on the level that they own now. Oh, no, no, because they, they, they actually, as a matter of fact, backed about it. Pete, baby came in there with skullduggery. Okay. <clears throat> Pete came up in there, I think, was. Silk, it wasn't King George. It was Silk, I think, and it was seeing one of his cousins. And um, I was up in there with my artist, which was Six Shot and Soldier Slim. Wow, that's, and a, it was that's all, heavy right there. And it was all up in there. Free. You say Six Shot, Soldier Str- Slim, uh, uh, Masterpiece, Silk. Man, come on, baby. And who was with baby? Skull Duggery. Come on, man. And this, then, a, this is something serious. <clears throat> that's, a, were, that's a serious lineup, man. They were up in there, all of them up in there, freestyling over about it. Are you serious? This was before Baby got his deal. P just got his deal and, and had his name was out there because of. And they were freestyling on about it. Yeah, and and and, and um, because of the ice cream man. Dude, was doing this some baby numbers. them been knowing each other. Y'all been knowing each other all y'all life, really. Man, me and baby played sandlock football together, man. <laughs> oh man, we went to middle school together. Are you? Wow, Hell yeah, that's crazy. And the thing about it, me and Manny DJed in the same club before him and baby knew each other. Woo-hoo-hoo. I knew both of them before they knew each that's other. That's crazy. I'm loving this show right you here. You know what I'm boy. saying? Because it is. Because yeah. it is. Manny was a top DJ downtown. I was a top DJ uptown. And we DJed in a club that you needed You needed to be seriously searched. Wow. That's crazy. And he had a hell of a run, too. He yeah. had a run. So you enjoy seeing his run when he was doing his oh, thing. Yeah, man, Manny was That's so crazy, crazy, man. Because, listen, we used to be, before, we, before our success, we used to share sounds. Really? Hell Yeah. That's the thing I met. One time I left my drum machine in the studio and Manny went in there. Manny was producing a song for two females from New Orleans that was beefing with okay. each other. Okay. And um, he stole my drum machine up in there like, boy, motherfucker left an 808 in this bitch. <laughs> like, they was like, uh, who that for? They was like, uh, that for uh, KLC. I'm like, oh, man, it's KL Drum. Was it? He said, I was about to steal that bitch. But the trip on the body was, <laughs> <laughs> this is the funny part. <laughs> The two females was beefing with each other. He produced both of the records, so he was going back telling each other what they were saying about each other. Oh, God, <laughs> man, man. <laughs> uh, Speaking of mentioning females, so how was it with, did you know that Mia X had something when you first, you know? Hell yeah, I heard Mia before we knew each other. Of As course. matter of fact, my son, the chef, yeah. mm-hmm. is Mia's godson. Wow, that's hot, that's hot. She was heavy, man. I'm talking about, hey, man, you could not rap. That's another reason I thought the South was winning. Because it's a competition <laughs> thing with me. You know, I'm like, we winning. <clears throat> and, and that's the way I felt because we had some heat down here. It, it was just serious. <laughs> so when you met, I, and going back to uh, uh, Down For My Niggas, when you met Snoop Dogg, because you had to meet him with all this music going right, on. Right, but this this the second album. Correct. Right. When you met him, how was that whole, because he was coming out of a situation. Right. And then now you got to find a new sound with him that he wasn't used to that Southern sound. Mm. Right. Let me tell you something how funny this was. The first time Snoop and I worked together. As a matter of fact, I'm going to take it right when Snoop came. Okay. Pete called a meeting for everybody to come in there. 
and his words were, look, I'm just about to let y'all know, everybody is not going to be on this record. If you're not told to come to the studio, don't. Mm. Wow. Mm -mm. And that's talking to everybody in the camp. That's everybody on the label. I don't give a damn if it was... If it was uh, the people that clean up, you had you he had a time to that you yeah, were assigned thing, to come now because normally you know everybody just show, show up, up to the studio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when it came to this point, now nah, do you think because Snoop came into the camp, he just wanted to change it up or just nah, having that? Way? Let me tell you something. It, it, what was so funny about it, but which because it was like this with me. Um, when Snoop and I did our first song, right, which was. I can't remember. Can't remember. I'm gonna find it. <clears throat> Believe that. And um, I never forget. I was behind the board. He was in the booth. I hit play and record, so the beat ran right. It ran for about five minutes for the whole beat. Then I stopped it. I'm looking at him like, "Yo, what's up?" Nephew, I'm just waiting for you to tell me what to do. Really? Yeah. So my expectations is I know and I've heard how um Dre worked at Dixar. Okay. And it's nothing to play with. Okay. And the way we did records at No Limit was like, come on man, let's hurry up and get that shit out. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> it was totally different. Totally different. So it was, okay. um, I didn't know how this was going to play. Okay. But it was just more like, um, Snoop was like, uh, come on, nephew. I'm just waiting on you to tell me what to do. And that's crazy because you never would have thought Snoop, you would think Snoop already knew what to do. He would have right. come in and start going. I'm like, he would have freestyled on, the, on that thing. But Snoop, Snoop is an artist to where. Respectfully. He want to be produced. He want the producer to guide him to where whatever he do, the, the man that's in front of him, we his ears. That's crazy. So he, he respect want, what you saying and yeah. how you listen, <clears throat> which is smart, really. Right. Because y'all doing this every single day, every night. You know what I mean? That's what I would listen to as well if I was in that, if that was my thing. I would right. have to. That's the, That goes back to what you said earlier, how you guys kind of predicted the movement. So he's pretty much really just wanted, affirmed that. Yeah, he wanted me to guide it. That's what's up, man. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we going to talk.